Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Welcome to New Hope Windward Online. Right now, we're going into a time of worship. So we invite you, if you'd like, to stand and join us as we worship our King today.
God, we pour out our hearts, all of our worship, all that we are to you today, God. We just thank you. We thank you, God, for being there in everything that we do amidst all of the storms and the chaos of life. We thank you for being that beacon of light for each and every one of us who are lost to find our way. So we just love you, and we lift up this time of worship to you, God, and we pray all these things in your son's name, Jesus. And we say amen and amen. Amen, family. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Go ahead and have a seat. If you stood with us during worship, relax and just enjoy service. Aloha. 
My name is Brandon and I want to welcome you to New Hope Windward Online. We are excited that you're joining us today. In a few moments, we're going to hear an incredible message as we kick off our Warrior Message Series. But before Pastor Dave shares an inspiring message with us, we're going to worship God through our giving. Oftentimes, we share how your giving is making an impact through the many local and global ministries and community organizations that we financially support. But today, I'd like to share with you how your giving is making a significant difference in the lives of many who are a part of our church. With this week's announcement of an extended two-week stay-at-home order, I'm sure many of us are beginning to go stir-crazy, me included, from having little to no interaction with our friends, family, and church ohana. In fact, it can feel like we're not only relationally isolated, but spiritually isolated as well. That's why it's so crucial for us to stay connected to the body of Christ through small groups. God intended spiritual growth to happen in community, and your giving enables us to develop amazing small group resources throughout the year and make them readily available for everyone in groups to access absolutely free on our website. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus commands us to make disciples of all the nations, and there are many locally, on the mainland, and all the way in Europe who use our online small group resources. So thank you, New Hope Winward. Your generosity ensures that we can continue to grow bigger and stronger disciples for Jesus, both locally and around the world. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate. By clicking the Give tab on our website, you can give a one-time gift or have it recurring. Another way to give is by texting the word DONATION to the number on your screen and follow the instructions, or if you prefer to mail in your gift, you can send it to the address below. Would you bow your heads with me as I lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we cannot begin to imagine doing life on our own. We recognize our deep need for you as well as for one another so that we can become the disciples you've called us to be. Lord, thank you for the generosity of many who invest in growing others through small groups so that as iron sharpens iron, we can sharpen and encourage one another towards making a greater kingdom difference for you. Lord, would you take what we give today and use it so that many more lives will be transformed by the power of your word through the materials and resources we provide. We worship and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, we want to welcome you to our New Hope Online community. We'd love for you to invite your friends and family to tune in to our services as well. We'd also love to keep you informed with all that's going on at New Hope Windward. So simply text Starbucks to 484848 and we will email you a Starbucks e-gift card as our way of saying welcome to New Hope Windward. Do you feel like you could use a boost in your relationship with God? Are you feeling isolated and could use some encouragement in this season? You know, one of the best places you can be during this pandemic is in one of many small groups available online at New Hope Windward. We have all kinds of small groups for men, women, couples, co-ed groups, teens, and even kids. They're made up of normal, everyday people just like you and me who want to grow stronger in the relationship with Jesus and with others. So just head over to our website and click the Join a Small Group tab. You can check out the various groups available and see which one best fits you and your schedule. You can also text GROUPS to 484848 to join a group. And as I shared earlier, we have free small group materials for this new message series available for you on our website. Just click the Download a Guide tab. In this season, many of us are facing all kinds of challenges, from job loss to financial struggles, health issues to being isolated from others for long periods. But rather than just struggling through it, God calls us to come to Him in prayer. In the Bible, Jesus said that many of the breakthroughs we desperately need can only come through praying and fasting. So as we kick off our Warrior Series, one of the major ways to win in the battles of life is to pray. So starting tomorrow, as a church, we will commit to praying daily for the next 21 days. Would you like to experience God's breakthrough in a certain area of your life? Then we'd like to encourage you to join us. Just go to our website and download the free 21 Days of Prayer Guide. Something powerful always happens when God's people pray. Well, that's it for all of our announcements today. Well, today we're launching our new Warrior Message Series, and we have a great message from Pastor Dave. So wherever you're joining us from, would you join me in welcoming Pastor Dave?
Well, welcome to New Hope Windward Online. We are so glad that you're with us. I received a letter recently, and I want to share this with you because I think many of us can relate to what's written in it, and I did get permission to share this. It says, Pastor, I thought 2020 was going to be a good year, but now I just want it to be over with. My stress is so high because of all the changes at home and work caused by this pandemic. On top of it, there's a lot of arguments and tension in a few of my closest relationships which has left me discouraged. I'm tired of fighting battle after battle. It is so draining. I need some breakthroughs in these battles of life. Can you help me? And you know, when I read that, I was just focused on that last sentence. It really stuck out to me that, can you help me with these battles of life? I need a breakthrough. And so I wanted to ask you, do you need a breakthrough in any area of your life? Think about that. Well, first of all, what is a breakthrough? A breakthrough is where you are stuck in some area of your life where you're not making progress and you need God to show up to help you break through being stuck. So let me ask you again. Do you need a breakthrough in any area of your life? For some of you, maybe you need a breakthrough in a relationship and your relationship is stalled. You try to make progress, but you haven't. Others of you, maybe you need a breakthrough in in just being able to get things done. You've been really stressed because of all the changes at work and you're thinking there's just too much to do and not enough time to do it. You need a breakthrough with productivity. Some of you might say, you know what, I need a breakthrough at work or I need a breakthrough spiritually. I was talking to a guy who said, you know what Dave, he said during this COVID pandemic, he said, I've become so spiritually lazy. He said, I don't pray as much as I used to. I don't read the Bible as frequently as I should. He said, I'm so disconnected from other Christians. I, I'm just becoming spiritually unfit. And so do you need to have a breakthrough in any area of your life? Some of you, you're going, yeah, man, I need a breakthrough in my finances. Or Dave, I have a physical issue. I, I have a, a disease or some area in my health that needs a breakthrough. And the reality is in this pandemic, all of us need a breakthrough in some area. And so I have some good news for you because today we're launching a series called Warrior. And we're going to be talking about how to win in the battles of life. In other words, how do we get breakthroughs in these areas where we need them most? And so over the next 30 days, we're going to be teaching you what God says on what we need to do to have a breakthrough. And I, I hope you're encouraged because I'm telling you over the next 30 days, if you do what God's going to teach us to do, many of you are going to have breakthroughs like you've never seen before in these areas where you're stuck. And so as you look at the scriptures, I want to ask you, what are the first steps that you need to take to have a breakthrough? Think about that. What are the first steps that you need to take to have a breakthrough? Like, what do you need to do to get a financial breakthrough? What do you need to do to get a health breakthrough? What do you need to do to get a relationship breakthrough? Well, let me give you the first step as we see in Scripture. Take a look, uh, look up on the screen. The first step is prayer. I know, we already know that prayer is important, but as you read the scriptures, often before God's breakthrough power came into a person's circumstances, they had to pray, and oftentimes they had to fast. So let me ask you this, how is your prayer life? I mean, just between you and God, how's your prayer life? You know, when I ask people, hey, how's your prayer life? You know what most people do? They usually kind of put their head down, have a little bit of a guilty look on their face, and they say, ah, oh, yeah, I don't pray enough, Dave, or, hey, you know, I'm just not consistent with my prayer life, or, you know, Dave, when I pray, I just get so distracted, or, you know what, Dave, um, I don't like praying. I just, to be honest, I don't like praying. Uh, other people just say, I'm just not good at it, so I don't do it very often. So let me ask you, how's your prayer life? So today we're going to go verse by verse through Matthew 6, verses 9 through 3, and we're going to learn from the master prayer warrior on how to pray, Jesus himself. Now, I've practiced what he's teaching us today, and I'm telling you, if you do these steps that Jesus teaches, you will experience more health emotionally, physically, internally. 
you'll experience more energy at times. Uh, if you pray this way, it can reduce your stress. It can help you make better decisions, which we all need from time to time. It can help you stay closer to God. And bottom line is you will have more breakthroughs if you pray this way. So let's look at the first verse where Jesus teaches us the first step in praying for a breakthrough. And here's what he says in verse 9 of Matthew 6. He says, pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven. Now, when you see the Lord's Prayer, a lot of times people think we need to recite the Lord's Prayer, but Jesus said, you need to pray in this way. In other words, he doesn't say, you need to pray these words. He's giving us a model for how to pray. In other words, pray in this way, in your own words, our Father who is in heaven. In other words, talk to God as your Father. Now, this word... A father is the word Abba in Greek, and I've shared this before, but it's the word Abba. And this is the most intimate way you can say father in the Greek. It literally means father, dad, daddy, papa. It's where when you talk to God, you're talking to him like your dad. That your relationship with him is so close that when you communicate with him, he's your father, your dad. And so he wants us to pray this way. I want to encourage you to write this down. Is pray conversationally throughout your day. In other words, you talk to God the way you talk to me. You just conversate with him. You just have a conversation with him. The way you talk to other people, the way you talk to God. You don't have to talk, come to God with all these formal words. Oh, omnipotent God above, we worship and praise you. No, like you don't want people talking to you that way. That would be weird. God just wants you to have a conversation with him throughout the day. Now, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says, pray without ceasing. In other words, we are to pray throughout the day. And so one of the best things you can do to experience breakthroughs is to pray throughout the day. Not just your morning prayers, not just your evening prayers, but you pray all throughout your day. And it's really easy to pray because conversation, because you just talk to God. You know, right now, you are thinking, okay? I want you to just stop. Right now, you're thinking. Your mind is always thinking. Like, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this is the most amazing sermon I've ever heard. Okay, no, you're not thinking that, right? But you're thinking. Now, here's how you pray conversationally. You just include God in your thoughts. So you're thinking all day. You can pray throughout the day. Just include him in your thoughts. Say, God, I'm kind of worried right now. Uh, God, I'm stressed. Hey, God, man, I'm so excited to eat this plate lunch. You just include God into your prayers. You pray throughout the day. Now, what's cool about conversation prayer is you can pray wherever you are. You can pray on your way walking to the bathroom. You can pray when you pick up the mail. You can pray taking out the garbage. Just say, God, you know, thanks for help today with this and that. Or, God, the sky is so beautiful. Just whatever you're thinking, you talk to God. You have a conversation with him throughout the day. Now, stop and think about this. Why does God want you to have a conversation with him throughout the day? Here's why. You see, God is your father, and he wants a personal relationship with you. And you can't get close to somebody unless you have conversations with them on a regular basis. And so I just love the fact that God wants to make prayer so simple. You just pray throughout the day. I mean, you could go to the grocery store. Just talk to God. Now, I'm not saying you got to pray out loud. You can just pray in your mind. And here's another thing, just to be clear. You don't have to bow your head when you pray. In fact, we don't ever see Jesus praying where he bowed his head. Sometimes he looked up. Other times he, he just put his face to the ground. So you don't have to bow your head. And you don't have to pray in Jesus' name every single time you pray. You just have a running conversation with God throughout your day. Are you doing that? Because if you haven't developed that habit, let me tell you, it's life-changing. In fact, if you don't get anything else I say today, get this. You want more breakthroughs in your life? Pray conversationally throughout your day. All right. Now, I'm going to go through the remaining ways that Jesus teaches us how to pray. And I'm going to put them in an acrostic that's easy for us to remember. So here's the first step to do is you praise him when you first start praying. 
In other words, you praise him for who he is and you praise him for what he has done in your life and what he's going to do in your life. So we want to start our prayers with praising, with thanking God. Now, why is gratitude so important? Well, not only is it a biblical command for us to be grateful, to praise God, but doctors has, have also discovered that the single healthiest emotion that we can have is gratitude. I mean, think about it. When you have an attitude of gratitude, doctors have shown us that you're actually healthier physically, you're healthier emotionally, uh, mentally, I mean, it has dramatic benefits on our overall well-being. It's good for your health. And get this, psychologists have proven that the attitude that you have at the beginning of the day, the first eight minutes of your day, that that sets your attitude for the remaining part of your day. So gratitude is so important. And maybe that's why Jesus said, start with praise. Now let's see where Jesus says this up on the screen. He says, pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now, what does hallowed be your name mean? Well, in the, the Greek, this is the word holy. Holy be your name, God. Now, let's stop and think about it. Why, what's the big deal about God's name? Like, why does Jesus want us to praise God's holy name? Well, as you read scripture, you will see in the Hebrew and Greek that there are over a hundred names for God. And the names of God actually describe God's character. They describe what God does. They describe what God promises to do in your life when you have a relationship with him and obey him. So Jesus wants us to praise him for who he is and for what he's done and what he's going to do in our lives. And so he wants us to praise him. Now, let me show you some of these names up here on the screen uh, out of the hundred names of God. Here's one. It's El Shaddai. It means I'm God Almighty and I have the power that you need. Here's another one. Jehovah Shalom. I am your peace. Any of you need more peace in your life? God can be your peace. Here's one. Elohe Chasti, if I'm saying that correctly. I am your kind, good, and faithful God. I mean, what if when you talk to God, you're like, God, I just praise you. You're so, you're kind. You're good. You're so faithful. Instead of God, you must be so disappointed in me most of the time. Right? It's praising his name. This is who God is. Here's one. Elohe Selechat. It means I am your God who forgives you. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with guilt and shame because I know I don't measure up to all of God's standards. I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Can any of you relate? And when I remember that God is my forgiver and I praise Him for that, let me tell you, it just changes my heart. I don't feel this, gra this guilt all throughout the day. And then here's one, Jehovah Rafi. It means you're God who heals you. And so Jesus, watch this very closely. This is who the God is that you're talking to, that you're having a conversation with. He's a God that has all the power you need. He has peace for you. He, he's kind. He's good. He's faithful. He's a God who forgives you. He's, he's a God who heals you. That's who he is. And Jesus says, because that's who he is, hallowed be your name. I praise you. I thank you. God, so when you pray, God, I praise you. I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for what you've done in my life and who you promised to be in my life as I do relationship with you. That's powerful. Again, most of the time when we pray, we just come to God with our problems. But here Jesus says, start with praise. Hallowed be thy name. So the key to having breakthroughs is to pray conversationally throughout the day and then to praise God for who he is and for what he's done in your life. Here's the next step that Jesus teaches us. Take a look up on the screen. We need to not only praise, we need to say it with me. We need to repent. And that means that I admit my sins and I forgive those who have frustrated me. Now, here's how Jesus said it. Take a look up on the screen. He says, and forgive us our debts, which means our sins as we also have forgiven our debtors. And what that means is that you, you let go of the sins and the resentment that you might have towards others. 
That's what it means when Jesus taught us to pray this way. We need to repent. So you praise God. You just say, God, thank you for who you are, for what you've done. And then God, is there anything that's come between us? Anything I need to repent from? The word repent means you need to turn from your sin. You need to confess it. And so God, is there anything you need to confess? And then you just admit it, whatever it might be. God, man, I just admit I had a really bad attitude towards that family member last night. Please forgive me of that. And God, forgive me for those things I was watching on TV. I shouldn't have watched that. Please forgive me, Lord. And you just repent. And then you forgive anybody who has frustrated you. Now, I call these repenting prayers, I call it taking out the trash prayers. You know, it's like taking out the garbage. Now, taking out the trash doesn't take long, but boy, it sure keeps your house from stinking. And so when you pray these prayers of repentance, it takes the trash out of our souls, our minds, and our hearts, and it, and it gets rid of it so that we don't stink of that sin. Because that sin can actually hinder our relationship with God. It can keep us from hearing Him speak to us. And so repenting prayer is just something to do every day, especially after you've dealt with irritating people at work or with at home. And so you just, you just say, God, I just choose to forgive this person. I choose to forgive them as Jesus, you have forgiven me. And so that's why Jesus said, pray like this. Father, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Now, I want you to look up here. Look at my eyes real quick, quickly. This is very important. Once you pray this prayer of repentance, you don't have to feel any more shame. You don't have to feel any more guilt. Why? Because Jesus forgives you completely. You see, Jesus was crucified on the cross so you can stop crucifying yourself. So once you sin, how long should you feel guilty? Until you repent? Until you confess it? Mourn that sin and move on. Sometimes people just live in guilt. I, I remember uh, one of my former pastors telling me about this lady at, at the church that I used to attend years and years ago. And this lady would come up to him after service and she'd say, Pastor, God spoke to me during that message you just preached. And my pastor would say, well, what did God tell you? She said, well, he, he just told me um, how sinful I am. He keeps pointing out all these things and I'm doing wrong every single time. And so he told me every time she came up to him and he saw him after service, she always said, God just spoke to me and he's telling me all the things I'm doing wrong. And so after there was a pattern of this where this woman was just carrying guilt over and over and over, my pastor finally said to her, ma'am, does God ever say anything nice to you? Does he ever say anything encouraging to you? Now, here's my point. One of God's names, as I covered, is Elohim Selechat. I am the God who forgives you. And so we don't have to walk around full of guilt and shame because God forgives us. Can I get a good amen for that? Amen. So have a conversation with God throughout the day. Praise him for who he is, for what he's done, and repent. And then you do this next step. Take a look up on the screen. So we need to ask for anything you need and for what other people need. So here's what we do. Here's how Jesus said it. Mark 6, 11. Give us this day our daily bread. So Jesus says we need to ask for our daily bread, not only for ourselves, but for us. So we need to pray for ourselves and then pray for others in our life, for our daily bread. Now, what in the world does daily bread mean? Well, it, it means... We need to pray daily for the resources that we need. So it could be food, but bread is also a word used for money. So, you know, hey man, you got any bread on you? Uh, you know, uh, bread is just anything that sustains you. Like maybe you need energy. Maybe you need wisdom for a decision. Maybe you need help with a project. You say, God, I, I want to just ask you for some things that I need. And I also want to pray for... Uh, some people at work, I want to pray for my loved ones. I want to pray as you taught us to give us this day our daily bread. Now, I want to say this, that 
Before you buy things, I want to encourage you to pray for things. So pray for it before you pay for it. I'll give you a quick example in my life. So I remember I, I went to buy some Aloha shirts and I remember seeing this shirt and I thought, oh, that's all right shirt. Yeah, I think I want to get that. So I just prayed. I said, God, you cool with me getting this? I mean, a quick two second prayer. And I just had this sense in my heart, like, don't do that. You know, when you feel like, ah, don't do that. So I thought, oh, okay, maybe I'm not supposed to buy this. So I didn't buy it. I waited a month, uh, came back two months later. And I remember I saw this shirt on the rack and I thought, oh, there's that shirt I saw. And I looked at the price tag on it and this shirt had dropped over $55 in costs. And so I got this shirt like more than half off than it was. And so my point is this, is that a lot of times we don't pray about everything. We just pray about some things. We pray about things that we think are really spiritual. But I want you to see what Jesus' half-brother James tells us. He says, you do not have because you do not ask. In other words, you don't pray about things. You ask and you do not receive because you also ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your own pleasures. So James says, hey, one of the reasons that God doesn't answer some of your prayers is you don't ask him. And then the other times he doesn't answer some of your prayers is you've got some wrong motives. Like you just want to, you just want him to answer prayers for your own pleasures. And so it's so important for us to just pray for things, to ask God. And you pray about anything. And so let me give you a story that reminds me of this. There's a story about a guy, he died and he went to heaven and he saw all these warehouses in heaven. And so the angel took him to one of the warehouses and he saw all these items within the warehouse. He saw these nice couches, he saw clothes, he saw cars, computers, new phones, he saw a marriage partner, he saw uh, special vacations, restored relationships. And the guy says to the angel, what are all these things? And the angel said, well, pick up the tag, see what the tag says on them. So the guy walked up to these couches and he looked at the tag and the tag said, never asked for. Then he went to another item in this heavenly warehouse and he picked up the, the tag, he read it, and it said, never asked for. I heard that story just reminded me that you do not have because you do not ask. And so God wants us to ask him each day for our daily bread. You know, there's a famous pastor from days of old named Charles Spurgeon, and he said this. He said, God never shuts his storehouses until you shut your mouth. And so I want to encourage you, pray about everything. It's God's decision to decide if he's going to answer that prayer or not. But if we don't ask, we ask not, we have not. Jesus said in John 14, 13, you may ask me for anything in my name. And so Jesus says, you can ask him for anything, not only your wants and your needs. And so your job is to ask, and God's job is to decide if it's part of his will for you. And so we want to pray for us, we want to ask for us, and we want to ask for the needs of others. So let's review. When we pray and have a conversation with God, we want to praise him for who he is and for what he's done. We want to repent admit what we've done wrong, forgive those who have frustrated us. Then we want to ask God for our needs and the needs of others. And then the last thing Jesus teaches us is we need to yield. What does that mean? We need to yield our will to God's will. So when you pray, you need to pray, God, may your will be done in my life as it's done in heaven. God, I'm going to defer to your desires for me today, not just my desires and impulses. We yield to God's will. Here's how Jesus said it. Take a look up on the screen. In Mark 6, 10, he says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I want you to think about the time of day that you tend to be most tempted. Now for me, my biggest temptations actually come in the evenings. And they come from two very demonic sources. The television and the refrigerator. They, they're of the devil. And uh, I, I'm really good at staying on a diet 
until about 6 p.m. <laughs> From 6 p.m. to 11 o'clock, watch out, man. I'm so tempted then. And in fact, uh, studies show that a lot of people tend to sin more in the evening when it's dark. And so it's really good for us to pray to ask God to help us with our temptations. We need to pray as Jesus taught us, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. In other words, God, I'm about to walk into the house this evening. I'm depleted. I'm tired. Uh, I, I could be tempted to get into an argument with somebody I love dearly. So strengthen me, God. Strengthen me against the temptations I'm going to face. Now, obviously, we don't want to just pray this in the evening. We want to pray this throughout the day. Maybe before you head into a meeting or, or before you're around a difficult coworker, you just say, God, just help me with my temptations with this individual. You know, help me with my frustration towards them or help me manage my mouth well. God, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. God, help me yield to your will in this meeting, not my will. So we pray to yield. So God has given us a great promise when we're tempted. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, He will keep the temptation you're experiencing from becoming so strong that you can't stand up against it. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you will not give in to it. Now, this is an incredible promise. I, I highly encourage you, take a screenshot of this, memorize this verse. God says, listen, when you're tempted, I'm gonna give you the power to stand up against it, and I'm gonna show you a way from giving into that temptation. I'm gonna show you a way out. It's like an escape hatch. So here's the thing. God will provide that. Now we have to go through that escape hatch. In other words, we have to escape from that temptation. Now, sometimes that means we need to turn the, the channel on the television. Other times it means that we need to be careful what we say. Other times it means don't open up that refrigerator door. We need to change the channel, close the door, take the way of escape from that temptation that God is providing us. But just an incredible promise because God's saying, listen, I will make a way out for you from that temptation. So powerful. So let's summarize. How did Jesus teach us to pray? We need to open up with praise. We need to repent. We need to ask and we need to yield. Please take a picture of this. This has changed my prayer life over the years. And it's a model based on the Lord's prayer, on how Jesus taught us to pray. Most of us, honestly, when we talk to God, we just ask him for things. We ask him for his help. But imagine if you do all of these every day throughout the day. You pray the way the Lord taught us to pray. I'm telling you, it changes your life. It changes the way you pray. And it's so, so helpful. Now, I want to show you a resource that is going to be very helpful to help you pray more. Starting tomorrow on Monday, we are going to start 21 Days of Prayer. Now, what is 21 Days of Prayer? 21 Days of Prayer is a booklet that we put together for you that you can download from our website that has 21 days of different prayers. There's short prayers and written prayers here. It literally will take you about 20 seconds to read through this prayer and this, this scripture here. It is so incredibly helpful. And what's great about 21 days of prayer is over the next 21 days, we're gonna be praying for breakthrough. And we're gonna be praying for things we don't normally pray about. We're gonna pray scriptures we haven't prayed. So I wanna ask all of you that are part of New Hope Windward, download the 21 days of prayer guide. It's free on our New Hope Windward website. And you can also receive this by just signing up uh, on any of our social media platforms. Just follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook. And what we'll do is if you follow us, what you will receive in your feed each day are these prayers and scriptures. So it's just, it, we're just all gonna be praying for 21 days. Now, imagine if 2,000 people were praying for you over the next 21 days. Do you think that would make a difference in your life? Absolutely. And in 21 days of prayer, we are going to be praying for ourselves and each other for the next 21 days. I'm telling you, it's going to be life-changing. So again, tomorrow, Monday, we're launching 21 days of prayer. So go to the website, 
right now, go on your phone whenever you can. Follow us on social media and join us for 21 Days of Prayer. It's going to help you become so spiritually fit. The other thing that all of us can do, and I'm asking everybody to do for the next 30 days, just four weeks, is to get in a warrior small group. And so we've put together a great series called Warrior that'll teach us not only how to pray better, but how to understand and get into God's word more. We're going to talk about spiritual warfare, which is primarily the battle between our brains. How do we fight that battle in our minds? How do we manage our moods? It's a really powerful study. And again, over the next 30 days, the goal is that we become more spiritually fit. And so I want to encourage you, go to our New Hope Winward website, check out the small groups that we have, and sign up for one. I'm asking all of you, give God four weeks in a small group. It's a Zoom-based small group, so you can do it from your home. We have them on different days at different times. And once again, it's life-changing. Let's get spiritually fit. Let's commit to become warriors so that we can win in the battles of life. Amen, everyone? Amen. Well, let's just go before the Lord right now and let's pray. If you wouldn't mind, let's just bow our heads so we can concentrate on talking to God. So let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, God, thank you for being my Father. Thank you for your desire to have a close relationship with me and a running conversation with me throughout the day. Thank you for teaching me a simple, powerful way to pray. God, I want to praise you. Hallowed be your name. I want to praise you for who you are, for what you've done and promised to do in my life. God, help me to praise you throughout the day by expressing my gratitude to you. And Lord, I know you want me to repent. And so right now I admit my sins. So wherever you are right now, just go ahead and confess any sins to God right now. Just You can just confess them in your mind. Just admit your sins right now. God will hear you. God, I ask you to forgive me of these sins. And I choose to forgive those who sinned against me, God. Father, I forgive those who frustrated me. I thank you that you forgive me. Right now, God, I ask that you remove from my heart the guilt, the shame, any resentment, any bitterness. And going forward, God, I'm going to stop rehearsing my regrets and my resentments. And God, you want me to ask when I pray. And so, Father, give us this day our daily bread. God, I, I thank you that I can ask you for anything. And so right now, wherever you're at, just ask God for whatever you need. Just go ahead and ask him for whatever you need. And feel free to ask him for, one, for some of your wants as well. Go ahead, just ask him. And Lord, we also pray as you taught us, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Father, I yield my will to your will. I want your plans for my life today. Help me to yield to your desires by obeying you, especially when I don't want to and when I don't feel like it. And God, when I'm tempted, lead us not into temptation, God, but deliver us from the evil one. So Jesus, we pray that you'd strengthen us against the fight against temptations that come our way. Why don't you just pray this? Just say, God, help me to make godly decisions, not impulsive ones. And Jesus, thank you for providing the power that I need to live the life you want me to live. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. As your heads are still bowed, if you've never begun a relationship with Jesus, or maybe you did in the past, and you want to renew that relationship, why don't you just pray this prayer with me? Invite Jesus into your heart to say this. To say, Jesus, come into my life right now. Change me. Save me. I want to get to know you personally. I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Well, I want to encourage you to go to our New Hope Winward website and download our Warrior Small Group Guide. And go ahead and take a look at the different small groups that we have and sign up for one of these Zoom groups. 
And if you have any questions, you can email or call us at the office and we'd be glad to help you find a group that you can attend for the next four weeks. Now, again, this is all free and this can really help you get spiritually fit. Also, again, starting tomorrow, we're going to start 21 days of prayer. So be sure to go to our website and download the guide. It's free. Again, they're quick prayers, but they'll change your life. They make such a difference in your day. And you can also follow us on different social media platforms. Go to New Hope Windward Instagram or Facebook and just follow us. We will send those prayers to your feed each and every day so that we can have thousands of people praying for each other. All right. Now we're going to do something that's so important. We're going to sing the final song. And this is a great way for us to pray. You can pray to God by singing songs. So let's join our amazing worship team and let's worship God with this final song. As we sing this last worship song together today, I just encourage you to make this a declaration in agreement with who God is, that he's our way maker. He is our promise keeper. He is our light in the darkness. No matter what season we're in, he's always with us. So let's just continue to worship him today. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are 
part of this bridge. I just encourage you that whatever season you're in, whether you feel like God is distant from you or he's not near you, even when you do not see it, he's working. Even when you do not feel it, he's working. He is making a way. So this might be hard for you to sing to believe, but just declare this over your life. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. keeper for being our light in the darkness we worship you today Jesus can we say amen to that well thank you so much for tuning in with us today hope that you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time God bless <laughs>